How's it going everybody? CJ here. Back into the video. This is another first thoughts today. This first thoughts is on Brina the Demagogue. This card seems pretty fun. It's a very interesting commander and I'm excited to get into this. But before we do, remember hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Like this video. Comment down below what you're doing with Brina. If you're gonna if there's any cool synergies that I missed, type, let me know down below. Also, we got a Discord linked way down below in the links section. So join us in the Discord, it's a good time. We also got my new YouTube channel for Pokemon stuff, so join that one if you want to. Uh, help me choose my starter. Um, we also got the Twitch and the Twitter down below, and we got the Patreon and the TCG Player affiliate link down below. Both those help support the channel and help me cr produce better content. So hit those up. And we're gonna hop into this. So Brina the Demagogue. This commander is gonna be a very cool politics commander that's like the best way i can think about building this it's going to be a very cool politics commander you're going to be making deals left and right you're going to be trying to help your opponents while actually helping yourself beat your opponents like your opponents are going to be helping you to win while you're giving them a little card draw it's going to be a cool deck it's going to be a cool deck also just to make sure people know this because it's hard to actually register this when you first read the card you can attack the two players that have the hot that hat so you have three opponents right you're sitting there, you got three opponents. Say you got opponent A at 30, opponent B at 30, opponent C at 29 life. If you attack opponents A and B, you're attacking two of your opponents that uh, have... Wait, what's the wording on here? Wants to have... Okay, you're attacking two opponents that have more life than another opponent. So that means you get to draw four cards and put down four counters. So only you and the person that's in last place, if it's not you, have this ability to draw four. The other two players can only draw two cards by attacking the other one of them, if that makes sense. But it's a cool synergy. Like You can benefit much more than most of your opponents, and your opponents will kind of be flip-flopping about who can benefit the most from it. So... I think it works out really well for you, especially because she has flying, so that way you can get over everything and just poke people for one, because you, you, you can always make deals. Like, like, you're making deals with people, and you can be like, hey, can I just poke you for one? They'll be like, yeah, sure. And so then you have to draw two cards and get two counters. Seems good. You can also, this commander could easily end up becoming a Voltron killing, like, one-shotting commander. Like, if your opponents all want to draw cards, and you get one, two, three... Like, you play Brina, pass a turn. One, two, three, you're getting six counters onto Brina, and then suddenly she's swinging in for seven during your turn, and that goes up to eight, nine when you trigger her. So, and if you have two creatures, then that can be 11 damage right there. Like, Brina is actually, I didn't even realize this until I'm talking about it right now. She can be a very powerful Voltron commander. Like, that seems that seems very very good. I like that a lot actually. I like that a lot. Uh, next, I'm gonna be talking about the monarch cards and the politics stuff. So monarchy is a very cool mechanic, especially when you're playing a politics deck. So you might as well throw in cards of monarch, so, like the two courts. One court in particular, the uh, Court of Ambition, seems a little better because it drains your opponent's life totals. And they can. This, I think that's going to be one of the ways to win is try to just slowly lower your opponent's life totals while they beat each other down. And then Palace Jailer, just a great removal card. There's tons of good Monarch cards, and there's just a couple. Uh, but for regular old politics cards, you got Scheming Symmetry and Wish Claw Talisman. Both those seem like a lot of fun. You got Council's Judgment. You got Benevolent Offering, which is a cool card that gives you life and tokens and stuff. and gives your opponent's life and opponent tokens. Uh, Capital Punishment, which is a Council's Dilemma card. And so you either discard a sack creatures. It seems pretty decent. If you put like all of the Council Dilemmas cards in there, there's also... Two cards that I cannot remember the name, and I probably should have written them down that let you get extra votes in Council Dilemmas and stuff. Whenever you're voting, you get an extra vote. So if you want to re full go fully into those, I will probably put the pictures of them right now so you can see them, but I don't remember what the name is. But 
uh, the conspiracy sets have a lot of voting in them. So these two cards, these two cards are going to be pretty good for that. Uh, you got Virtue's Maneuver. You got Detective Immortality, so you can get back a lot of things. You got Dawnbreaker Regent or Reclaimer, which I have not seen played before. It's a very cool card, and it lets you reanimate stuff and lets an opponent reanimate stuff. But you get to pick what your opponent reanimates, and they pick what you reanimate. So you guys can make like a deal, like, hey, if you give me back my uh, Palace Jailer, I'll give you back your Eternal Witness. Okay, yeah. You just do deals. Uh, Magister of Worth, another pick voting card, which is a pretty cool one. Yeah, Custody Squire, which uh, is another voting one. And it lets you, uh, lets you reanimate something to your hand. And then Duelist Heritage, which is a cool one. Because at, you can trigger it, it triggers at every combat. So you can choose to give any creature double strike whenever they're attacking. So you can say, hey, if you attack so-and-so with your commander, I'll give it double strike. And, of course, they're going to be like, yes. I'm going to draw two cards and hit them for a million damage. Sounds good to me. Seems fun. Next up. I want to talk about some Staxi Hate Bear cards because they tend to be very good inside of Orzhov. And you're going to need some other strategy to fill out the rest of the deck because there's not a million politics cards. And so I listed Aven Mind Sensor, Archon of Ameria, Linvala Keeper of Silence, and Hushbringer. There are tons of great Hate Bears and Stax cards, but I'm thinking that specifically the hate bears that have flying are really worthwhile running in this deck. Because they help to stop your opponents while also giving you flyers that you can swing with to trigger Brina without having to worry about blockers. I think that, that seems like a very good strategy, a good secondary strategy in the deck. Like you throw in all the politics cards and you round it out with these just so that way you can hurt your opponents while also giving yourself evasive creatures. It seems like a good strategy, in my opinion. And then ways to, like, really win the game, to close it out. You're already draining life. Well, your opponents going to be hitting each other, so draining more life might just be the way to do it, so that way you're kind of low-key scary, but everyone else is the scary ones because they're hitting for a lot of damage while you're just slowly taking them down. So stuff like Cambal or Lyesa seem like great in includes. Isolation Cell... Blood Chief's Ascension, Painful Quandary, all these seem great. You can also throw in Wound Reflection and Archfiend of Despair to double it up, which seems very nice. It'll also double up the damage that your opponents take from, like, the attacks. Like, you can make this deck end people quickly by your opponents just duking it out with each other. It, I, I like this deck a lot. You can throw in Soren Markov just to dome somebody down to 10, and... They're going to die soon. <laughs> I don't know. This seems fun. Uh, Tim the Weaver. It's a similar effect to Brina. But it's like... Brina's kind of like a Timna for everybody. Brina... Or Tim uh, in your deck just gives you extra card advantage. Yeah. T uh, Tesa, Envoy of Ghosts. No Mercy. And Mingara. All of... in like... um, What's it called? Ghostly Prison. All of these to help deter your opponents from attacking you, so that way they really want to attack each other. And that seems like a win-win. You can throw in Smothering Tithe, Underworld Dreams, and Mind's Eye to get triggers off your opponents drawing all these extra cards. Getting extra treasure seems great. Slowly draining your opponents seems even, like, even more on theme. Not better, but more on theme with the deck. And Mingar is just value. Mingar is just good value. And another deterrent for attacking you. Uh, you can also throw in <clears throat> Exquisite Blood to keep your life total high. So as your opponent's life totals go down, yours goes up. And if you're going to run that, you might as well run Sanguine Bond so you have the combo finish. And then Keeper of the Accord, just so you can maintain a board state and ramp. Like It just, it just seems like a decent card in this deck. And yeah. That's what I got for Brina the Demigod. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh. If you guys enjoyed this video, remember, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Comment down below what you're doing with Brina. If there's any cool cards I did not mention that you're putting in your Brina deck, let me know so I can put them in my Brina deck if I build Brina. 
Um, TCG player affiliate link down below. Buy your cards through there. Uh, Patreon down below. Join it. It's fun. Discord link down below. Join it. You can chat with us. Uh, Twitch and Twitter down below. Join it so you can keep up with everything. And my other YouTube channel down below. Help me choose my starter, please. We'll see you guys next time. Peace out, everybody.